Hey y'all, Olivia Hermosa from TikTok. If you like those true crimes and verified stories, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button to Petty Tupac TV. Uh -uh. It was a lot of gangs and drugs and stuff out there. Yeah, like when I was coming up, all my older homies was like Vice Lords and GDs. That's what they was. And we danced car click banging. But niggas like me and Tate, rest in peace, Tate, Jit, rest in peace, Jit, my, my nigga Kyle, Billy, uh, Billy from Beamans, Lil Tome, rest in peace, Lou Meman, Leroy. We was already blunting. We was already calling ourselves bloods and doing all that before we was even official, like before we even knew what it was. Because we had family out of town who came out here and just was like, you know, they just got the we was we was, we was on some we was on some jocking. We was jocking, but it was our okay. people though. <laughs> okay. Um, who are some of the biggest influences in the streets of Lansing to you? To be honest with you, because I ain't really grew up looking towards niggas. As I had a disposition because my dad been locked up my whole life. So I ain't really even like looking at niggas. Like I ain't even like niggas. Like older niggas than me was just like older niggas. Like even taller guys was little than me. So I had a complex. So really. I look to my dad, like the, the shit that my family told me about my dad. I look to that, that entity of gangster and try to live up to that for a long time. And like the, my mindset came from like Goku though, like anime and shit. Like for real. I just can't <laughs> let nobody whoop me, but all, for real though. Like can't let nobody, can't let nobody whoop me, but always do it with a smile. Take okay. every, take every on with a smile. Like it ain't nothing. Like wake up a fighter every day. I want to take that so who, who are some legends out there? Do you think? Man, man, I know. To be honest, so you you slapping all your auntie? You slapping me? You ain't say nothing to me, so no, hell no, I ain't slapping you. You ain't the one lying. So I put a gun on you. you. Ain't the one lying. So I put guns on people. But people doing what they better do, stay in their lane. But yeah, though, uh, my man, my pops, the legend out here, my uncle on Wilby's T baby. Joe Nate, man, my people, my people is the people out here, like from both sides of my family. Like I'm born, bred, both sides of my family here type shit and came up right in a minute. So like wealthy niggas, my mama a wealthy dog. Yeah, my mama, my mama, some of us, my, my mama a wealthy dog. She was off in the gang shit. She was a flower of vice lord. So even my mama, they everybody off her hood used to call her mama. And her hood was the biggest hood out here for like majority of Grand Rapids history. It's called wealthy. The biggest hood, still, still the biggest hood. I heard the older guys got the most money and stuff like that. So she all tatted. My mama got tattoos all in her face, like it's like gang, gang for real down here with my side and what we do. Oui. <laughs> um. So earlier you said you have been arrested. How many times? I only been arrested and went to prison one time. I caught my case when I was seventeen. Never was I went to like juvenile once type shit. Uh, a uh, boot camp once type shit. But never was arrested before I was 17 and I went to prison. And that whole time, now in that time, I did catch cases in prison, like uh, stabbing the dude, fighting the CO, beating the CO up. I caught cases for that. And then going up north and getting the NOI for some, you know what I'm saying? Okay. What was your thoughts about heading to prison? Huh? What were your thoughts about heading to prison? To be honest, my dad been in prison my whole life. So my mindset on the end where I'm from mindset on it, I really wasn't at first I really wasn't like thinking about it how I was supposed to. I was thinking about like, oh, this is a chance. My honest thoughts at the time, like, oh, this is a chance to show I'm a real nigga. I didn't really it didn't really affect me to like six years in, seven years in, like doing two years straight in the hole. I did two years straight in the hole at that point. I had did a year before that. So them them moments when I was really like, I, re I had woke up for the first time, like, damn, I'm in prison. And it took seven years to get to that point because I was just in there and, it, and I have never had to think about nothing because I was just gangbanging and fighting and fighting and going to the hole. I never had to think. And they set me down. So once realizing that, that shit was terrible. You hear me? Like, I was very ashamed. And I don't mean ashamed like my dick was showing and it was small. No, I mean, like, I was ashamed for, like, my family. Like, I was embarrassed, like, of my situation. And I was embarrassed that other grown man could do that to me and I'm tough as hell and I'm in there being tough over other inmates but I ain't doing nothing to him this is what caused me to beat the CO up this mindset right here when I developed that mindset so it, it was it wasn't it ain't no experience that you need unless you live a lifestyle like me because I would have probably died if I was still out here I did too much right okay was it what you expected 
No, niggas is bitches in there. Hell no. I thought that bitch was going to be tough. I thought niggas going to be cut like that. I thought niggas going to be big as fuck. I went in there at 17. My first altercation, I got into with that bitch in three days because I was tripping. I got into some other people's business. Long story short, I went. My, I was like going to child and, so, and the guy said a disrespectful term. And I thought he was talking to me, but I never had no altercation with this nigga. So I shouldn't have knew he wasn't talking to me. But I just turned around and was like, nigga, what? Pop, 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 pop. And I popped off and like a lot of niggas jumped me. And from then that time, I kind of was rotating with the homies because I had got in their business. But nah, niggas was bitches. Like, they was like gay. And ain't no wrong, be gay, you gay, be gay. But like, they was like sneaky gay. They was soft. Like, people, niggas was in there, like big ass diesel niggas was in there, like big ass diesel ass niggas, six, eight niggas named Tough. Nigga name is Tough. Like, this a real person I'm talking about. Nigga, a bitch. Like, you can squeeze this big ass nigga and get all this store and make him go beat people up. Like, the shit is, is, is not what the movies say it's, it's weak as hell it's negative and gay real shit okay some affiliation so my question is what made you join and pick that particular group or of people well, i'm i'm a um, i'm a blood i'm pdlb blood. i'm bad news respect it all the way out in cali and you can check this shit out. This shit can be verified. My big homie, Rich, Rich homie, comes straight from Juice Smash. Got the Smash line out here. I got the line. Out. Like when I was in jail, I was around a whole bunch of young niggas. And you know, when you a young nigga, you like to run with other young niggas, especially when there ain't no girls around. You got to run with the niggas, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we hoop, we play basketball, we aggressive, we want to learn. It was like it's just, a, it's just like being in a, uh, just like knowing a whole bunch of youths, but y'all just different, just a little bit. And then it was the teachings of it. It was like, shit, be black. Like, don't be scared to be black. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you in the gang, but this gang is not made for to be a villain. This gang is made for everybody to be like my hero academia. Everybody to be heroes. So you telling me there's a place where I can go and be boisterous and be wild and, and be hungry for knowledge and hungry for war, but also put it in the mindset that I'm saving people and that means he ready for war every day? With Goku, do you ask me to be myself? And my homie, my older homie, not even my big homie put me down, but OG Red Eyes, he'll uh, check out episode of um, one, episode 147, The Gangland. You can see who uh, OG Red Eyes is. He was in our prison system, and I met him before he went to Cali prison, uh, prison system. He was the imam of the Sunnis. And he just like, he seen me, like I, I started coming to service, and he was like, you're supposed to be a blood. And from there, I, sh I knew I was, though, too. Before this, I always bread, everything about me, the fire I feel, the shit I like, I like I like what I be, it's exciting, that's what blood is, it's symbols, it's signs, it's, it's love, it's culture, it's, it's not oppression, it's not crabism and I don't even mean like crabs and crabs because crabs all stay together if you know the truth about crabs so I'm not saying it like that, I mean like the oppression mm -hmm. to bring you down, it's like be up, be a homie, I couldn't do nothing, and then there's so many, it was so many niggas like me that wouldn't listen to the older homie, but they'll listen to me. I felt like it was my duty. Like, even though it just came to me, but I feel like it was my duty because it'd be 30 young niggas on the yard and they not even listening to the nigga I respect what he say. But as soon as I say something, they listen to it. It was like, this is my calling. And it was going to get me rich. And it was going to get me right. And it was going to help my family. So it was just like, I just like I was supposed to. I was meant for it. That's what I really want to say. For real. I'm going to let everybody. I never heard nobody put it in that. Uh, view. So, that's why I say I'm really this. Like, I'm really this every day. I wake up this every day. Everybody that know me, you if you knew me for a couple months, you would be saying Sue, and not because you were blood, just because how, how I breathe it. You will be saying be fuzz. You will be like, no, blood. You're like, you will, it, 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 it'd be funny and it'd be something to connect us because I really breathe this shit off into everybody around me. And you don't need to be a blood to be my blood because I am blood. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Um, I have another question. What are two of the craziest moments that you've seen in prison that blew your mind? Craziest moment, hands down. I think this white boy named Rabbit, who was a, a GD, get raped. But like, this shit was. It was like. It was like. It man. Like I don't even like even thinking it's cringy. But he was grabbed into a room out of nowhere. And locked in there and beat and raped. And it's like, it's different to, to, to hear about rape because it's so common. But like to hear it, like hear it in your room, it's like a, 
I don't fuck with the nigga, you know what I'm saying? I never fuck with the nigga. It was like, he my friend, and I'm one of them type of niggas, like, if I ain't got to know you, I, I, I ain't going to show no fake love. But, like, even at that time, a person like me was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, uh, I, I wanted to help the nigga type shit, but, like, I knew it wasn't my business. But, like, man, the police couldn't even get in the door because the dude put metal in the door and, and, and shed it so it can break, and they couldn't get in it for hours. So for hours, this dude was sitting there getting... Rabbit was in there at Bellamy Creek, 2012. He was in there. Ah. He like, and then I ran into him again at level five, like two years later, 2014, when I had went to the hope for two years. And like, he still was sitting on a donut, like type stuff. So yeah, that's about the craziest mm -hmm. shit I be right there. What? Oh no, ah. one more. A CO, a CO caught his, a CO caught his girlfriend giving another MA head and he went in the, uh, the parking lot and killed himself. That was another crazy one. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, that's that, okay. Yeah. Have you ever been tried in there? Like what well, was on what tip? Online. Like, I ain't never been I ain't never been tried by the gay dudes, but like I'm a gang member and I'm real aggressive. And I was number five. But I've been tried like by like niggas. Like okay. my whole bit. I got tried my first prison, I got tried by a nigga from my uh from Grand Rapids name Hank. He pulled a knife on me. I beat him up in a child hall at like MR. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all research on MR? Beat his ass and that bitch. Whooped him. That was the Made him drop the knife. I hear you. That was the first time somebody tried you to the point. Yeah, that was like, that was my first prison. Like, that was my first prison. My first time going to the hole after I got out the hole. Like, my first time going to the hole over a situation that had to do with me. It was nobody else. I got in. Like, the nigga just out of nowhere just had a problem with me. And wanted to stab me, so I had to like do it like that. You daddy lady today. You did? Yeah, let me hit you one second. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, I had to. I had to beat on him, and then I got tried one more time up in 2014 by my homeboy. He called me a bitch, and then I had to. His name was Chuck, and I had to do him bad. Mm, okay. Yeah. Was you ever scared? Well, I was scared to do what. Was you ever scared in it, like, at all? I'm all, like, only time I'm scared is when I'm finna get into somebody. Every time I finna get into somebody, I'm scared. I'm scared of every situation I get into. My heart be beating fast. I just don't lose them bitches, and I, and I handle that. But I'm scared of everything. I'm a scary-ass nigga. So I always get down. So I always attack. That's why I get on niggas' ass. That's why I go learn. I'm a scary-ass nigga. Niggas might not think I'm scary, because how I move. I, and with the I, I feel like a lot of people who are more scared would, you know, defend themselves harder. Yeah, I go honest. crazy, it's still my final edge. I go crazy. I be like, this bag right here, this, 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 my bag is like, that bitch, that bitch, everything. Like, I go, I'm scary as hell. I beat your ass in this bitch right now for looking too brave. Because I'm scary. I don't know what you might do. I pop your shit up. Go to jail and be straight. Like, he died for a reason. I talk about it like, I know, what the, I know what I'm getting myself into out here. I'm not playing with nobody. Ever. Okay, and you were caught with weapon a weapons charge. Why did you feel like it was? Yeah. Um, I went back to court, got some time back, right? In 2012 at Beverly Creek. So it was boo because I had eight years. But when I did that shit to the CO and I caught the weapons charge, they ran it consecutive. I mean, they ran it concurrent all together. You feel me? And just gave me the rape charge because really they try to fight me first on camera. That's really what really happened. I stabbed somebody and he got away and I didn't. And the knife was way over there and like just tried to get away. And they flipped me. They slammed me. They fucked. They, they was fucking me up. So I had to handle that. I got to beat time before I went to level five. That was the reason I went to level five. All that shit came with level five. So all them all the months later when I was on NOI, they brought the case up. I wasn't. I didn't get caught with no knife at level five. I was just on the yard. I got called a knife way back at level four at Brooks. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got level five. That's the whole reason. So they brought the NOI back up on me. It wasn't the K, and they brought it back up. And I also got arrested too. He told. So it was it was inevitable. I was always gonna get the case because they my, my mom was worried. They called my mom and shit. Like we riding them out. They rolled me out in a motherfucking regular car, uh, regular sedan. I mean shackles. I'm thinking they finna kill me. Took me all the way. Took like 30 minutes too. And it take like four hours to always get there. Took like 30 minutes to get to that bitch. And put me in a whole nother jail, and I wasn't supposed to do that. Like, I ain't even had no cell there. I was in a bam bam cell. I'm mean, not a bam bam cell. I was in a motherfucking um a quarantine cell 
at Marquette, and it's like a metal door on that bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a metal door. Like, this bitch, like, this is where sick people go. Sick people being here. So they get quarantined. They didn't have no room at Marquette for me. So they had to put me in a uh, cell to the morning to SEC came to let me mm. Yeah, that sounds wild. Um, What made you get a face tattoo? Shit, when I was younger, I thought I was tough. Okay. And I thought I was, like, I thought it was going to make me cuter and shit. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm be a tough cute <laughs> what? Didn't, didn't none of that shit work. For real, so I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Like it was some old philosophical shit. I was off my hood. I was I was doing it the hardest. I wanted to just be the rough. I just wanted to be the hardest with it. And I'm like, oh this shit gonna look dope, baby. The bitches gonna like me. And that's why I did it. You know, nothing more. I could have put that shit on my arm. Like I did, by the fact. It was already on my arm before that. I got this when I was twelve. This one was my first tattoo. I got that bitch when I was 12 years old. 